Hey, Petty Fish. It's the 23rd of May, 2018. Wow, time flies. But there is no shortage of things to talk about. This one in particular, though, there's a couple things I want to just show you real quick to illustrate the spiritual warfare that's going on right in front of us, all around us. Okay? They, uh, celebrated, I guess, or marked the anniversary of the attack in Manchester last year. Uh, many of you probably remember the Manchester Arena attack on May 22nd by a 22-year-old man. 22 people were killed. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. The 22s on the 22nd, okay? That's what they were talking about all day yesterday. We look at the images here. Look at the little memorials that they put out. They put the guy in the wheelchair to pull on the heartstrings, and he's reading the little octagon-shaped uh, or pentagon-shaped uh, love notes that they put on the Tree of Hope. Okay, this is all a ritual, you guys. All of it. The tolling of the bells. Okay? Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because this morning an article came out that's very interesting. This event happened at exactly 10.30 p.m., a year to the minute after the bombing, the church bells toll. Okay, 10.31. That's also 22.31 in the 24-hour clock. Flip it around. 13. 322. All the markings, they're all there. It was a ritual, period. And so this morning I see this article of this guy, Philip Roth, as in Rothschild, one of America's greatest novelists. Okay, he died last night at 85 years old. And this guy apparently was no uh, bundle of love, I guess you could say. He wrote about some very controversial subject matter. Uh, he did not believe in God at all. In fact, right here it tells us he told Sunday morning he didn't believe in God and said, when the whole world doesn't believe in God, it'll be a great place. His wife said he was a hostile man and didn't even like women. Does that sound like anyone or anything that you can think of? He got all his treasure on earth. Won every prize short of the Nobel. Okay? So he got his treasure. And now it was time for him to do his duty to his master and give his life. Okay? On the sacrificial time. Look what time he died. 10.30. What time did this massacre at this arena happen? 10.31. Exactly a year and a minute. Okay? 31. 13, very important, the whole number gig. But this was a ritual death, satanic to the core, the locusts on the little memorials. These are nothing more than Satan's little vanities, just manipulating and using humanity, pulling at the goodness that's in everybody to deceive them and lead them into the pit of death. Because if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you are not washed in his blood, then this stuff will devour you. You're not going to win. You need a savior to pull you out of the darkness that is encompassing this world. It's that simple. So I wanted to show you that. It's a plain, flat-out, blatant, ritual, satanic death. 1933, born. 85, 13, dies at 1030 doesn't believe in God, says the world will be a better place without God. Exactly a year after this satanic event, the 22-22-22 event. And when it comes to the numbers, you have to understand we're dealing with a satanic dark entity here. So we look at their definitions. We look at how they read these things, okay? And I don't share a lot of this stuff with you guys. I talk a lot about numbers, but I keep it really light and I interpret, you know, just in a light manner. I don't get into the depths of all this stuff. The Thelema, the Kabbalah. But I used to study these things. 
And God pulled me from that fire. Praise God, he did. And, you know, he, he set me up to understand this stuff, to be able to share it and show people that they live in a deceit-filled world that is an illusion. You're an eternal being that is literally exiled, imprisoned, if you will, in a flesh body that perishes. But your soul, the thing that only God can give life to, only God, uh, is eternal. You need to understand that your life here means something and that at the end of it all, you you have to answer for what you did, okay? But there is a savior. There is one who takes all that dark things, all the wicked stuff that we ourselves have participated in. It doesn't matter if it's a little stealing or a little lie or whatever. He forgives us. He washes us clean. He bled for the world and atoned for our sins, but we need to look to him and believe on him. He's the only way. No man is going to open that door, ever. Okay? The 22, 22, 22 on the 22nd. Let's look at where their little world, where they go from their Bible, okay? This is what they live by, okay? What you need is the Bible, okay? The 22, the key of the house of David, Jesus Christ. Look how they look at it. They're talking about the lesser keys of Solomon, okay? Now let's look at the principal demons of the satanic Bible of Anton LaVey. The 22 sentinels of the Kelepoth, okay, in their respective sigils. This is the first bringing up of the number 22 and what it represents. It has many, many meaning, meanings, even in the occult world. It's a double eleven. It can so, it, many things, but in this particular case, they're talking about the twenty-two sentinels, sentinels of the Kilopoth. Sentinels. It's just another word for watchers. The twenty-two watchers of the Kilopoth. The Kilopoth. What is that? The shell, the husk, your body, your flesh. Satan rules over the flesh. He is the prince of the air. He is the, 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 the great tempter, okay? The deceiver, the father of lies. And he puts sentinels over the Kelopoth, 22. What is the Kelopoth? Well, the Kelopoth, like I said, is nothing less than the housing, the shell. That's literally what it is, okay? Peels, shell husks. The Kabbalah tree. Remember how they are talking about this uh, Manchester incident and they have their tree of hope. The tree of hope with the locusts on it. You understand? They have a whole trail of these things. I'm not kidding you. The tree of hope trail. Where you can leave messages on the little pentagon shaped love note message board there. Okay, do you see where I'm coming from now? I hope so. Because I know I'm not the greatest at explaining this. The Kilopoth and the Kabbalah and the Lieber 777, all of these things, they're all from the same source. Satan, Lucifer, the fallen ones. And they will convince you that if you just obtain their knowledge and their enlightenment, that you'll be lifted. You'll be... uh What's the word? Apotheosis into eternal life and avoid judgment. And then you can have your cake and eat it too forever. That's what they believe. That's what people like Philip Roth believe. They believed the lie instead of, <laughs> you know what I mean. It's just sick. This world, I'll tell you, I'm getting really tired. I, I am. I'm getting tired. This stuff is making me tired. But one more thing before I go. I found this very interesting, and I want to see what you think about it. I also saw this article yesterday, the 22nd. They bring this out on the 22nd as well. The capital city, meaning Damascus, is completely safe. Quote, completely safe. And you read on here, and they say it again. Damascus and its surroundings are completely secure. In quotes. So Damascus is safe and secure. 
It looks to me like it's also destroyed. But I digress. What I did, I was just moved to put this in the Gematria, you guys. Damascus, safe and secure. And look what we get. 202. 1212. This is so interesting. This really is very, very interesting. And 949. 22. 1313. This is crazy, you guys. All I know is it points to they are heavy into the rituals right now. The spiritual war is raging, as it always is. But now we can see it better. We have eyes available to us through Christ Jesus to see it, shine the light on it, and show it to others so they can get pulled out of this fire. Because it's coming. It's coming sooner than most people think. And they are not going to know what to do. I'm telling you, you seek Jesus and you'll be fine. Okay? I just thought that that was absolutely crazy. And there's just, as usual, there's a bazillion things more that I'd really like to share with you. But I don't have time right now. But we'll get back to it. So, there you go, you guys. The spiritual war is raging. So, you know, keep looking up. Keep praying up, seeking Jesus diligently, okay? That's what you need to do. Peace and grace to you. Many fish. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, 